Good morning, everybody. Um, or I guess, yes, it is still morning. I had to look at my clock there for a second. Um, State Representative Tracy Ellert in the Iowa House today. I have my clerk truly with me again this morning. And we have Sheila Hansen from Common Good Iowa. And today we are going to talk about the role of a lobbyist. Sheila's a registered lobbyist with Common Good Iowa. And as long as, uh, as uh, well as um, other duties, Sheila, you want to tell us your, your exact title? I know you love how long it is now. No, I am uh, the government relations manager and also the senior policy advocate. Um, just sometimes I use both of those titles. Sometimes I'll just use one. Sometimes I don't use any title. Uh, but yes, it's a very long title now. Um, I was previously just called policy director and, and recently had a title change. So I'm gonna let Truly jump in as she thinks of questions too, but Sheila, you wanna give us a um, little idea of what a lobbyist does, um, particularly during the legislative session. Um, and I guess I will backtrack a little bit by saying that Sheila is um, known as a um, one client lobbyists, we have multi-client lobbyists also that represent multiple companies or businesses or organizations, but Sheila only represents Common Good Iowa. So her role might look a little different than some of our um, multi-client ones, but if you can give us an idea of what it looks like during the legislature being a lobbyist. Yeah, I get asked this question a lot, and even my parents at one point asked me, still ask me, what is it that you do? you do again. Um, it can be kind of uh, complicated, but I am a registered lobbyist and, and I, I actually looked up what is the definition of lobbyist and it is a person who influences legislation or regulation or appropriations was sort of the, the definition that was given. And I thought, well, that was an interesting uh, definition. Never really talked a lot about advocacy, but probably it, a bigger role that I have is more advocacy. Um, we do lobbying and that is really the direct um, influence that you might have on legislation. A lot of people say, well, what is the difference? And, and it, it would be if I went up to Representative Allert and I asked Representative Allert, would you, I need you to vote no on House File 301. It's a terrible bill. Um, but I could also go up to Representative Allert and just say, hey, did you know that in Cedar Rapids, um, this bill would have an impact on, you know, 300 kids in that area. And that would sort of be a diff the difference between advocacy and lobbying, just to start out with that. Um, but part of my job is to also the government relations part of, of that. Um, I keep track of all, a lot of the bills that are going through session and the bills that are related to our legislative pri pri priorities at Common Good Iowa. And we really focus on um, three areas and it's early childhood, family economic success, and we look at the tax structure. So um, ways and means bills um, are really important to us and ways and means are the taxes. I don't know if lots of people know that. I get confused sometimes like what was ways and means when I first started this, how would you ever get to taxes, you know, when you're ways and means committee, but that's really the, the tax committee. And then um, I, I follow, I will register us on the bills. So we're probably registered. I checked um, on a, a round of a hundred bills. Um, and so when I re mean I register us on bills, that means as a lobbyist, you register either for a bill, against a bill, or you're undecided. And, and I'm going to um, jump in real quick. I, as the legislator, use that information to help guide my decision on maybe how I should vote for a bill, especially bills that I'm not um, the expert in, um, especially if I see Sheila registered against something, knowing that her values, um, you know, at Common Good Iowa are very much um, aligned with the work that I do, then that flags me to be like, hey, Sheila, why, why do you guys not um, like this one? Or what are you seeing in this one that you do like if she's registered for it that maybe I'm not picking up on? So uh, looking at those lobby declarations are really important um, to us as legislators also. And as a lobbyist, we also look at who's registered um, for or against bills or undecided. So I'll look and see like, who are some of our partners if we're kind of unsure about a bill and I'll say, oh, well, um, 
so-and-so is registered for it. Okay, so I might contact them and say, you know, why are you for this? Can you tell me what parts that you really like about it? Or against also, what is it that you aren't liking about this? Did we miss something? Um, what, you know, why are you, you know, not in favor? And then the undecided is really interesting. We'll go into some um, subcommittee meetings registered as undecided, just because we'll wanna know more about the bill or what was the purpose of the bill. Um, and I don't know what your, how your feeling is, Representative Ellard, on how some lobbyists register as undecided, but we've been given a hard time often by some legislators, you're either for it or against it, how could you be undecided? And, and I think, well, that's true. We wanna monitor it. Um, it may not really have the biggest impact on our priorities, you know, what we're looking at, but it could have an impact. So I, I do you have anything that you use that for? Any it, it does throw us off, especially when it's mostly all undecided, um, but it does either clue us in that a this isn't a high priority bill for them. Um, you know, it might just be being like you said monitored because it does um, center around an area that um, you guys advocate for or you know, like if it's, um, you know, I always go back to the child care bills because you guys do a lot with child care and um, but maybe it's one that, you know, is just really neutral. So we usually think that, but sometimes it does confuse us because we think it's something that you guys should really be for or really against. And sometimes we find out that it's just, maybe you just are picking your battles and you have other things that you want to save that energy for to advocate more. And so it's kind of, um, holds the relationships in place if you aren't fighting against yeah. everything. We've seen that a lot this year and we especially see that in labor. They're like, you know, we really wanna pick and choose what we push back on, um, but we'll definitely watch and make sure, you know, no harmful amendments or anything are added to it. Yeah. So, yeah, so we understand, but it does when it's, when we're really not sure which way to go and we see a whole bunch of undecideds, it doesn't, <laughs> it's not helpful for yeah. us. No, and I think that that's, that's true. And it's, I really have started looking at that differently too, knowing that, that legislators look at that um, that way. So I'm trying to figure out, we, where are we for or against this? And especially going into it, I'll try to say we're right now we're undecided. As soon as we figure out, you know, find out a little bit more about the bill, we'll move to either against or for. And also some of the bigger bills like budget bills, we may, we may be undecided. There may be things in the budget bill we like, but there may be things in the budget bill we don't like. And so we'll just remain undecided and that, not just budget bills, but there may be some bigger bills like that also. And so, you know, there used to be a spot um, where we could put notes. And I think you still can, I, I need to check on that. You could put notes on the lobbying, on the registration. You know, if you do put undecided on something, you could say, well, I really like this, but I don't like, you know, the tax on this or something like that. And right now with COVID protocols, um, you can also go in and make those public comments. Um, I'm just trying to really make sure people are aware of that for um, people that aren't coming here in person. Um, so even beyond the lobbyists can comment on that as well. Yeah. And That's I use been that. Great. Yeah. And the, the Senate, which is a, a little bit different, the Senate for subcommittees, you can you you can you testify in a subcommittee in person and you also have a chance to comment. And the House they made the subcommittees um, where you can't testify in person. So the comments are really important that you uh, submit comments. And I know we got off to a little bit of a rocky start at the beginning, uh, whereas I think some of the comments weren't really being shared like they would, like, like we thought they should be. But I think some of that was taken care of as session moved on and people got into the groove of things. And I appreciate that public comment section. Um, as well, because even if I'm not assigned to the subcommittee, it's nice for me to go and look at those um, because I can't always attend the subcommittees in person because I might be in a committee or I might be in my own subcommittee. And so I've really found that helpful. I'm kind of hoping that they keep that ongoing. <laughs> that part was nice. Truly, um, do you have any questions? <laughs> Yeah, so I was wondering what education and career path did you take to get into lobbying? Good question, because if you would have asked my, my 21, 22 year old self who was in college, if this is what I would be doing 25 years later more, um, this wouldn't be it. Um, I, 
out of high school, I went to college at university of to at the University of Iowa, and I majored in psychology and, and sociology. So in a way, it, it fits. But I didn't know what I was going to do with that. <laughs> you know, with a sociology degree, a lot of times that uh, will take. Uh, you know, I, I might have had to go on to get my master's or something. But I was kind of done with school at that point. Um, after I graduated, I wanted to work, and so really right out of college, I got a job working for the WIC Maternal Child Health Program and um, started to really see working with families and a lot of families who were low income families or families who were really trying their best to just get by, um, especially with the maternal child health program. And, um, and I started to see things that like policies or rules that I didn't like, like why is that rule like that? You know, why do they make it so hard over here? Why is this, or how come it's so easy over here to, to do things? And so I really started to look at, at um, legislation and, and, and rules and what, who really decides all of these things, you know, um, puts all these rules in place around somebody, whether or not they can get a WIC check. Um, and then I would hear stories uh, from families about the difficulties that they had navigating the system. You know, they just, are down on their luck or they needed to have a little bit of help with this and they they were facing all these barriers <clears throat> and um so i just started to educate myself a little bit more well then a job opportunity became available within my own organization it was with a community action or organization with the head start program so i took a head start um, policy or i was a uh, parent involvement coordinator and then i really started to get involved in um, you know, the system and programs and what parents need to um, need to survive, basically, you know, what are some, um, some programs that they might be part of and the barriers there. And then um, just take it one step fur further, the um, Head Start formed the Iowa Head Start Association. And um, they had openings. And so I asked my boss, I said, I'd really like to be on their, um, on their board of directors. So I became the advocacy chair of the um, Iowa Head Start Association. And again, and like why did, <laughs> never thinking that that would be a role, you know, something that I would do, but I just saw the need, you know, that I, that there were families that needed advocacy and it really wasn't happening. Um, <clears throat> and so that led me to, to really have more relationships with the federal government, especially because Head Start is a federal program and at the time, Senator Tom Harkin was a, a was the senator, and he had Head Start under his juris, juris, jurisdiction. I can say that word, and it was being reauthorized. Uh, and they really relied on Iowa and Head Start people to to tell the story. What is it that Head Start needs? Um, where are the problems with Head Start? What are the rules? Uh, what's working well with Head Start? Can you have some parents that can um, talk to us? So I was sort of that connection that, that happened. And that just got me excited. I thought, wow, um, you really can make a difference. You know, that people in DC listen to you. <laughs> you know, they actually care about what, what people are saying. And um, just got me excited about the work, which then led me to the job that I'm in now. Uh, an, an opportunity became, was, used to be called um, Every Child Counts was within our organization at the Child and Family Policy Center. Um, a job opportunity opened up. I applied for it, and this is it's where I am today. <laughs> today, so it wasn't a road I never expected to travel at all. <clears throat> Truly, thank you for asking that question because I've known Sheila for many, many years, and I didn't even know that history. And I think that is a really good question um, because as we do these different um, segments. I think it really showcases the different areas of politics and legislature that you can get involved in without always being an elected official. Um, so Sheila, I don't know if you paid attention to any of our other segments that we've done, but like we talked to a couple advocacy groups. So, you know, which are still different than lobbyists. So we've shown that part. Um, we have, we talked to Senator Taylor to talk a little bit about, you know, the Senate versus the House. Me and um, Truly and I did one to talk about, you know, what do clerks do? And so just showing the different roles um, within the structure, uh, because I don't think people realize that there is so much work being done that is not just the legislators. And so that's kind of what we're trying to do with these segments right. kind of teach the population. Um, I'll be doing our next one after this will be with, um, 
minority Democrat whip Jennifer Converse. And we'll be talking about the different leadership roles within the House, because I don't think people realize, you know, there's the minority leader, the majority leader, the speaker, you know, your ranking members, your leadership, your whip. And so we're going to talk about that, too, on our next one. Um, truly, did you have any other questions or Sheila, anything else you want to share before we wrap up? Well, um, I think just sort of my, my last comment might be sorry, truly, if I, um, if you had something else, uh, I, there, are, there are times and I get a little sentimental here where I'm sitting in a committee meeting or, or a subcommittee meeting, especially, and I think to myself, like, why am I here? Like, who do I, who, you know, I'm actually having an impact on legislation and, um, hopefully, doing the right thing you know hopefully we're we're we've we've got enough um, my alexa is telling me it's time for lunch i don't know if you could hear that or not um but it reminds me that i have people to feed here at the <laughs> at home um but i really am hoping that whatever it is i'm sharing that it's the right message it's the right thing so it's important that as a lobbyist i also know what people need, especially around childcare. Try really hard to talk to childcare providers, to talk to families, um, to know who, you know, what are the needs to go to communities and visit various communities because I could sit at the Capitol all day and, and do what I think, okay, oh, to change this. We need this law, we need this. But um, I, you know, I can only do the right thing if I know what people really do need. And it's not just myself thinking I know what they need. And I appreciate that. And I know all our partners do as well. You're very thorough and good at getting information. And I know you've been a wonderful resource for me. And I appreciate when you ask me questions as well. So thank you for all the work you do, Sheila. And thank you for being on with us today. No, thank you. And I can't tell you how awesome it is to have somebody who gets child care in the legislature too. That's a, it's an awesome thing to have. It's, since I've been working on it so long, it's Finally, yay, someone, you have, you have lots of colleagues. I don't want to take anything away from them who are very good and great advocates, but you know, somebody who actually does the work is, is really important. Well, thank you. And thank you to everybody that's listening today um, for joining us. And we'll be back again next week with another segment. Thank you. Thank you.